What's up? This is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I'm going to be talking about today uh, how to make a metal reinforced full arch temp using uh, what's called the cradle bar technique. So this is a little bit of a deviation from how I've been doing it for the last uh, year or two, and I've I've really liked the way this has turned out, and I think it's got a number of advantages. So we'll we'll discuss all that today. Real quick, I do have some upcoming courses here in just uh, two or three weeks. I've got uh, the advanced full arch course in Manly, Australia. Uh, so I'll be there for the ICOI meeting, uh, the international meeting the week before, and then the following weekend we'll be doing uh, this two-day course, which teaches all of this stuff that I'm going to show, stackable guides, full arch guides, anything you can think of full arch, you know, we'll be covering that. Uh, so we'd love to have you join us on that. should be a beautiful uh, setting to do a course in. And then May 5th and 6th, I'll actually be having my comprehensive guided surgery course out at my farm in Tennessee. Um, you know, that one is the one to start with. If you've not, you know, designed your own guides before, uh, or if you're new to implants or guided surgery, this is definitely the course to start at. Um, and we cover an awful lot in that. And then finally, we'll be doing the advanced full arch course again in July in, uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. So got some great vacation destinations coming up for anyone who's interested in taking some of these courses. All right. So we'll jump into this. Um, I'm going to show here initially the way I traditionally have done it. Okay, so this was a recent case I helped someone with. So uh, we did a pin guide and then we followed that with the bone reduction guide, which slid in along the pins and gets pinned into place. You do your bone reduction and then we would have the magnetic stackable drill guide, uh, which would pop on here. And one of the things I want to point out is just notice how, how many connections I had to make here because I, I've done a bit of a redesign on the attachments uh, that I've cut down on a lot of the work. But, you know, you do have to make a lot of connections here between this. But uh, functionally, it works amazing. You know, this, this lets you do your guided surgery drilling. And then once you've got your implants in place, then you would put on your multi-unit abutments and your temp cylinders and we would have the the bar that would be the the temporary reinforcement bar and you would actually just pick that up okay so we don't actually pick the temp up using this technique we were just picking up this bar and it worked great um but occasionally we we found that you know in guided surgery sometimes you have to deviate from the plan you know maybe a socket doesn't cooperate and you don't get adequate stability um you know for whatever reason, maybe you have to freehand an implant into the site as opposed to guiding it, which can get your trajectory off. So if you look closely at this, you can see like this cylinder is not coming through the center of this hole where it should have been. And what I found was that adjusting on this metal took a lot of time and effort. Um, you know, this is chrome cobalt, so it's incredibly hard and it's very difficult to stretch a hole should you need to. And so I wanted to kind of come up with a better method for that. Um, and I think I've, I've, you know, come up with something that works a lot better and uh, is actually a little easier, which is uh, a nice benefit. But typically we would pick this bar up and then once we pick that up, we would just take it all out of the mouth and then just section off these little magnetic components that index it. And then you would have your temp made, which already has a socket built for this bar to uh, to go into the temp and you just bond all that together. Now, additionally, you would have to, after you do that, come back with resin and fully wrap your bar. So uh, it definitely speeds up the conversion quite a bit from you know a traditional denture conversion, a lot less guesswork than that, but I still felt like it could be improved and made more efficient. So brings us to this case. This is a, a case I was working on recently um, you'll notice on the bottom, this is, uh, this is the second case that made me think, man, I, I might need to find a better solution because we had done this arch. The doctor placed these implants, uh, four to six months ago and the case turned out beautifully. She's immediately loaded. Everything is integrated, but I happened to notice here, this particular implant, you know, this was using what I just showed using that technique. And I noticed this one had to be cut off there. And I assume that was because it probably, you know, got off track a little bit and that cylinder not falling right in the middle of the hole. It was so difficult to adjust. I'm guessing that they just ended up cutting that one off and just picking that one up direct in the temp. And so 
again, I think there's there's room for improvement here. Um, so the doctor had done a bilateral sinus lift on both sides here because this patient's maxilla is just completely deteriorated. She has almost you know no pre maxilla. And so getting some big sinus lifts in here and some buckle grafts, these are all tacks that you're seeing in that pen oak. Uh, you know, the grafting's all finished and now it's ready to do the guides on. So as with all my cases, I start with planning the restoration. So plan the teeth first, plan your implants backwards. So these were the teeth I came up with uh, based on pictures and smile design and everything. And then we began positioning implants. So we're gonna get seven implants in. These are mostly short implants because this patient just simply doesn't have much height. For example, that's an eight millimeter. I believe that's a nine, uh, but most of these are, are between eight and 10 millimeters. I don't think we have anything longer than 10. Thankfully, we were able to get, you know, several implants in there. So that makes me feel a lot better about using smaller implants. Here's the prosthetic emergence. Again, no angled abutments on any of these. Because of the sinus lifts, we were able to just go straight vertical. So we've got a nice emergence position on all of these implants. And this is the plane of reduction. Okay, so there's it's not a lot of reduction. In fact, just to do that amount of reduction alone really doesn't warrant a reduction guide. However, we're going to do a reduction guide just simply because it serves as the uh, foundation for you to then put your drill guide on, and then to index your temp. Okay, so it's just the way that we're gonna approach this case as opposed to swappable guides. And here you see the drill guide that we designed. I'm sorry, this is the reduction guide. Um, so since this patient is already edentulous, um, I came up with a bit of a different design. So you see that I, I actually have occlusal and a little bit of lingual extension at the very back heels of the reduction guide. And then I also have this little strut here in the anterior that are going to hook on the bone and give it a very definitive seating position. Now, the reason for that is we can't do like we would normally do and use the teeth to index a guide for drilling the pinholes. So that won't work. We potentially could use a denture that would be uh, just for drilling pinholes, but I didn't feel great about the accuracy of that. And so with this method, you can just simply lay a big flap and this guide is going to seat very definitively. I've done quite a few like these, uh, seen them used in surgery. It's a great way to index this and, you know, it still gives you a mostly buckle only guide, but you do have a little bit of occlusal extension. Um, and these, this is on an area where there is no reduction. So the reduction ends right there. This one, that area will be, need to be reduced, but that's why I keep it small is because you can simply keep that little piece of bone throughout the surgery as a positive stop for your guide. And then once you take everything off, you'll just have, you know, a couple of millimeters of bone to buzz off right in the anterior and it's no problem. And one other thing I'll show, this is the modified uh, connections that I've made. And so now what I've done, instead of having an individual peg, you know, that's kind of a male female seat and then individual magnet attachments, what I've done is just combined those. So the central hole here is the mag or the uh, male female peg. And then lateral to that on either side are the holes for the three millimeter magnets, uh, which are going to get inserted. So it gives you more overall magnets, which is greater retention. Plus, you're still getting that tripod effect where it can't slide around. But then furthermore, when you go to make your drill guide, you've got a lot less connections to make, like I pointed out in that earlier case. Because here, there's only three total attachments, so I just have to connect here, here, and here. And so this is the drill guide. This, uh, this is all going to be printed in chrome cobalt. And there you see it from the anterior. And here it is all printed. So Oral Arts Laboratory in uh, Huntsville, Alabama did the metal printing for me. I printed the models on my sprint ray and, uh, you know, test fit everything. It looks great. These are uh, printed abutments for where the implants should end up. And as you can see, the guide is right in the center of that hole. Now, here's where things have changed up from how I've typically done these. This is the way I did the tip. And so as opposed to the earlier case where I showed there's a bar, which you're going to pick up by itself here, this yellow or what you're seeing in orange here is actually going to be the metal part. 
and it's got a couple of little pegs that are going to index into this, but the rest of this restoration you simply print in-house and then you bond this into it before the case. So there's no uh, real conversion to do. Even though you got to do that outside of the mouth with the other technique, you still had to wrap the bar and everything. Well, this is going to remedy that because all of this will be pre-bonded and that has a number of benefits. And one of the biggest benefits is that if you end up needing to stretch a hole, right? Like the, the two cases I've mentioned before here, well, this is easy to do it. You've got a lot more leeway space inside of here. And this being just printed material, you can stretch a hole one way or another. Even if you have to deviate and go to another site, this, uh, this metal reinforcement is only like millimeter and a half to two millimeters thick. So let's say you ended up putting an implant in this site it'd be a pretty easy task just to drill a circular hole in that metal framework and then punch through the printed material and you could pick that up. But you still have a very, very strong temp because the entire underside is supported by this big chrome cobalt bar. Okay. And then the magnetic attachments get built into the printed portion. So this is what it looks like um, with the intaglia or the internal fitting surface i'm leaving that sandblasted which is basically how it comes back from 3d printing but before i bond anything up i'm going to highly polish the intaglio surface that will be in contact with the tissue uh, that's going to give a much nicer interface it won't uh, have plaque adhere to it like can be a problem with some composite materials and then we bond it to the superstructure so here you see the printed superstructure um, I forget which crown and bridge material I printed this out of, but it's one of the ones indicated for permanent crown and bridge. And you can see these little male, female pegs. I don't know how necessary those were, but I, I felt like it would give it a lot more uh, retention. And I, I don't think there's any chance of it debonding because these are all perfectly parallel. And so here it is bonded into the superstructure. And then I've, I've actually pinked it at this stage. That's why you're seeing the, the different color there. And here's how it fits onto the reduction guide. So again, after the implants are in place, uh, you should be able to seat this over your temp cylinders like you see right here and just do a pickup. Now, sometimes I'll punch a hole through the buckle so that you can inject your material for the pickup, but I really just leave that at the dock's discretion. Um, but it's easy to do because this is again, just printed material. So you could punch right through there and then inject your, your pickup from the buckle, not have to ha not need to have as big of a hole. And then this is again, just a lingual view. So this being just on the intaglio, you really don't see it uh, anywhere shining through, giving that darkish appearance on the patient's smile, but it's completely reinforced, okay? And beyond that, it's actually, if you ever had something break, let's say this patient chipped number eight or nine down to here and you didn't feel like it was up for a composite repair. You could simply take this printed restoration and hit it with a torch for a minute and all that printed material would crumble away, shine back up your framework and then just print the new superstructure bonded on and you're back in business. So it's really versatile. So this is the design phase of this. Here we have the hybrid and all I've done is subtract out the holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the area that I want that cradle to uh, occupy. So I've contracted back my selection a little bit away from my implant uh, holes uh, because I want to leave a little bit of space. And then anywhere that it was going to be thin between it, I'm just going to go ahead and wipe that out. Because again, if you've got a continuous bar on buckle and lingual, then having the interproximal doesn't really contribute much. So now that I've got the intaglio chosen, I'm, I'm defining the border of how deep this, uh, this bar superstructure will go. And so basically where it transitions from intaglio to buckle surface, I'm just uh, erasing that. And here, this orange selection that you're seeing, that's what's going to become my bar. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is duplicate my hybrid. I want one that's untouched and then I'll just hide that. And then I'm gonna delete everything except this selection I just did. So to give it some thickness, what I'm gonna do is just select it all and offset it by two millimeters. Okay, that gives you this whole new surface, smooth the boundaries. And now what I'll do is just go ahead and double click the boundary of each uh, hole and we'll join those together. So here you see me clicking an edge triangle. This is all in Mesh Mixer. Clicking that edge triangle, you hit J 
and that's the join function and you see it's enclosed that. Now I'm going to do it for each individual hole and I'm just going to repeat this for all of those. So we're just using that join function also found under this edit menu up here if you if you don't know the hotkeys. So now we have the completed bar but we have to build the socket to accept that bar. Okay, so uh, while well, I'm getting ahead of myself, I am going to place the, the little cylindrical pegs here that are gonna improve the retention of this. And so all I've done is just import a, uh, a cylinder about two millimeters in diameter. And I'm just positioning that under a bulk of material, like under the you know mesial lingual cusp right there. Um, you can stretch those up vertically, but notice that I'm, I'm not spinning them. I'm not changing their orientation because these all have to be parallel to, to be able to draw with that. So now I'm going to join all of those together. We'll combine them uh, with a Boolean union. And now this entire shape, I'm going to offset by 0.3 millimeters. Okay, and you'll see here, it's going to create an entirely new surface that is 0.3 millimeters larger in all dimensions than my original shape. You can see the transparency there. So now that I've got that, I'm simply going to take that offset surface and subtract from my original solid hybrid, the one that I duplicated earlier. And now when we turn both files on, you can see that I have my... Uh, my cradle bar substructure and I have the printed superstructure and we can uh, you know move this up and down you can kind of see it now there were some areas where the the uh, bar was impinging you can see those little colors it was impinging into the uh, into the pickup holes that would be something I would actually adjust out before sending it for printing. I just happen to not remember to do it. But essentially, that's the process of how you do this. It's I know that, that was a condensed uh, explanation, but it's nothing really complex. Um, and it's a lot easier than having to integrate the stackable components and everything like like I would typically do for one of these. And so this is the final result. We've got uh, you know the hybrid in occlusion indexed off of the reduction guide and once that gets picked up um, all you have to do is fill in the little gaps that are going to be between your cylinder uh, on the intaglio and the temp and then there's really not going to be anything to polish you just want to remove any excess composite material off of that metal framework so that you've already got that highly polished surface so that's it. Um, you know, the benefits to doing it this way is, is again, I've mentioned some of these, but it's easier to stretch the holes if you need to during the pickup. Implant doesn't go where you want it to. You have to relocate one. This makes it no problem. This is also a much less complex shape. So if you happen to be someone with a mill in house, I mean, any five axis mill could mill this in zirconia or in peak or pecton. If you want something tooth colored or if you, uh, you know, have a metal mill, you can mill this very easily. There's no complex geometry and magnetic interfaces and all that that you have to deal with. Um, you know, here, this is not a big deal because the magnetic interface was only connected with a very small metal uh, tube. But it's even easier now because you're just cutting through printed materials. So just a normal handpiece and you can have that uh, printed uh, interface taken off in no time. Uh, again, it gives you a really highly polished intaglio. That's a big benefit on these full arch cases where you're trying to keep things clean. And then finally, this metal reinforcement gets bonded to that superstructure before surgery. So it's going to cut down even more on your conversion time than using that, uh, the bar technique that I showed earlier. So that's, uh, that's all I got. That's, um, a simple technique that you can use if you ever need to make a immediate load hybrid or for that matter if you wanted to make a permanent hybrid you could use this technique and do it using the cal technique just pick up cylinders inside of that and that can now be your final restoration so a very versatile technique and uh you know I've, I've talked to some people that have done a lot of these and they've held up really well so this is probably the technique i'm going to be going with from here forward but again if you're interested in all of this stuff i'll be teaching all of this very in depth with uh videos you'll get to take home and everything at the advanced full arch courses 
And if this is way over your head and you want to jump in the shallow end and just get going on routine guides up to simple full arches, then that comprehensive guided surgery course would be the one to do. So hope you found that helpful. We'll talk later. See ya.